everyone in the San Francisco community to work together to help us locate Jean Chang Khan Fung. She's a grandmother, she's a mother, and she has been missing for five days right now. We want everyone to imagine that this is your mother or your grandmother. We need to step up, we need to find her, and we need to get her home to the people who love her and who she has loved and supported for her entire life. Bringing public attention to her disappearance and the search for her can help bring her back as quickly and safely as possible. Now, I want to be very clear. We do not have any reason to believe that a crime has occurred at this stage. Our top priority is ensuring that this beloved grandmother can be reunited with her family. And we need your help to be proactive, to prevent a crime, to prevent something bad from happening to someone who is vulnerable, who is elderly, who is a non-English speaker, and who is beloved by her family, and they are desperate to see her returned home safely. I want to share some key pieces of information to help folks step up and join the search. Ms. Fung was last seen around May 28th, around 4 p.m. California Highway Patrol officers made contact with her and dropped her off near the Marina District Safeway. There's no reports of anyone seeing her since then. She was last seen wearing a pink or, or reddish puffy jacket. Um, and um, that's basically the information that we have about where she was last seen and what she was wearing. Now, ordinarily, my office uh, does not get involved in missing persons investigations. Normally, SFPD handles uh, these sorts of investigations. But given the urgency here and the extreme vulnerability and uh, language limitations of the missing person, my office has stepped up and offered to provide assistance both to back up SFPD and their leadership role in the investigation, and also to support in helping the family uh, as they navigate a scary and difficult time. Our Victim Services Division has staff members who are fluent in Cantonese and Toisanese, which are Ms. Fung's language dialects. We have reason to believe that the language barrier may have played a role in why she got misplaced and is now lost or missing. It may have been an obstacle to getting her back where she needed to be when she was last contacted by CHP. This search, given all of the challenges, given how many days into her being missing we are now, this search requires the help and the vigilance of the public at large. We must work together to do everything we can to help bring Ms. Fung home quickly and safely. In the meantime, our victim services team will continue to offer all of the support we can to Ms. Fung's family. My investigators and the DA investigation team will continue to work with our partners in CHP and SFPD as we work tirelessly to try and find Ms. Fung and get her home safely. I know that Casey Lee and our victim services team have been working closely with the family, and we are all fearful about what may have happened, what may be happening, and we desperately want Ms. Fung to be returned home safely to her family. I have a short statement from her family that I'd like to read and share with all of you today at their request. Quote, our grandmother is a very kind person, always smiling and loves the outdoors. Our entire family has been extremely worried since Friday. We know she's out there. We don't know how she is, whether she's hungry, or needs help. We are pleading with everyone to please keep an eye out for her. She speaks Cantonese and Toisan. We miss her. Thank you all who have assisted and continue to assist in this search. Our family has always been her number one priority. Because of the language barrier, we believe she is out there feeling helpless and scared. Please help reunite us." End quote. Now, we can all only imagine the pain that the family is in. And I'm sure those words don't even scratch the surface of the anxiety and fear that they are living with every moment of every day. We hope that today's press conference, that standing together with our partners across the city from the Board of Supervisors to other law enforcement agencies, help to bring necessary attention 
in this disappearance and to ensure her safe return. I want to especially thank Supervisor Chan for bringing so much attention to Ms. Fung's disappearance, to helping rally all of us to the cause. And I also want to thank and commend San Francisco Police Department Chief Scott and his entire team in the San Francisco Police Department for their work to try and bring her home safely. Despite all of the efforts, we need help. We are asking everyone in San Francisco to join together to help bring Jean Chang Kan Fung home. Anyone who has seen Jean Chang Kan Fung or has any information about her disappearance or when she might have last been seen should please contact Sergeant Michael Horan of the San Francisco Police Department Special Victims Unit. The phone number there is 415-553-1028. That's San Francisco Police Department, SVU, Sergeant Michael Horan, 415-553-1028. Return home. Thank you. Thank you, DAB Dean. Next, we have District 1's Supervisor Connie Chan, who has been trying to get the word out on this since this weekend. Supervisor Chan. Thank you so much. Uh, thanks uh, for uh, having this, hosting this uh, press announcement to help us continue the search. I'm going to start my remarks in Chinese first uh, and then uh, English after. Uh,其实,从婆婆,可以给同学,okay,你都去,hey,let's see,man,可以,okay.Come,hey,go,hey,m,yalem,hey,face,and,see,tam,some,uh,you,do,jong,long,shang,bong,jo,or,they,die,
get her image in your mind uh, and, and try to identify her. Maybe a little harder with the mask on, but still, um, you know, just her outfits and all that. Just just please uh, pay attention. Uh, and, and at the same time, I, I really want all of us to reflect on how we can better support our district attorney and our police department uh, to really make sure that they have the resources uh, to bring grandma phone home at this moment, but but really beyond to keep all of us safe. Uh, we also need all of us just to continue to keep an eye out for grandma phone. And if you find her and see her, uh, or just even you think that you see her um, and, and not sure, just please call SFPD, uh, Special Victim Unit. And again, thank you, DA Bodine and your team. Uh, and thank you so much for the police department together, working together. I, I am so grateful for your partnership and so grateful for your work uh, and hosting this press announcement to ask the public's help to search for Grandma Fong. Thank you. Thank you for that, Supervisor Chan. Next, we will hear from Acting Deputy Chief Raj Viswani of the San Francisco Police Department. Hello, good afternoon. My name is Raj Viswani. I am the Deputy Chief of Investigations. Um, one of the areas that I oversee is the Special Victims Unit, which this case has now been elevated to. And we have three investigators in the Special Victims Unit that their full-time job is now um, this case. And um, my, Michael Horan is the lead on the case. But in addition to that, we have district station patrol officers that are looking for Ms. Fong. And in, at this time, what we know is that she has never walked away for this long. Uh, she does go on walks, which is normal. She doesn't have any real medical reason to not be home already. So we are concerned, our officers are concerned. We have distributed several different types of photos of her to the media, and I wanted to Definitely thank the media, Supervisor Chan, the district attorney, and uh, victim services for getting all this information out there. Because what we're asking for right now is the public's help. 24 hours a day, they can call 911 if they see her. The investigators have been working tirelessly on this. So they've been out there almost all day yesterday. They've been looking through video to see if they can see her on video so we can we can focus on an area. We've been following leads uh, of sightings of her, but unfortunately all the leads have not. Sighting was actually of her. Um, and the leads that we have received, they've been all over the city. So we encourage that. We don't want people just to focus on just the marina or just Clement Corridor, um, anywhere, Chinatown, Central, the Mission, Bayview, anywhere, um, that they see somebody, as the DA had already pointed out, she's wearing a red or pink jacket, so should stand out, purple sweater, brown pants, and black Ugg boots. And um, and, and again, that's that's really, what we're going to rely on is the public. All of our officers are also gonna be out there, but the public are our eyes and ears. And um, again, I will keep the DA's office updated. I will keep the supervisor's office updated and the media updated. And if we do have a direction that we're going with, or the minute she's found, the reason we wanna use the 911 number is because the minute she's found, we want to make sure she's okay. She's assessed that um, medical that she's looked at, her blood pressure is looked at, and she's fine. And that is our best case scenario that somebody calls us. Um, and we will continue to look for her. If there's any type of organization that is looking for her, I know there are volunteers. I would prefer to use that 553 1021 number if they have anything specific for the investigator, but for the general public, 911 is the best uh, way to reach the police department. I do have Captain Sergio Chen, who's also monitoring this call. He's on this Zoom call, and the lead investigator, Michael Horan, who's on this call. Um, 
if there's any, if there's nothing else that's for the police department is very concerned and Chief Scott is extremely concerned and we will do everything within our resources to bring her back home. Thank you. Thank you, Deputy Chief Aswani and also Sergeant Haran and all the officers who have been working on this. Um, we also have with us today the Coalition of Community Safety and Justice. CCSJ is a group of four API organizations that was formed just last year to address the safety of the API community in San Francisco. We have with us Ms. Lai Wa Wu, the Policy and Alliance Director of the Chinese Progressive Association. I'm sorry, Association. Thank you so much, Casey. Um, good morning, everybody. My name is Lei Wa Wu. I'm the Policy and Alliance Director at Chinese Progressive Association, also representative of Coalition for Community and Safety, Community Safety and Justice today. Um, thank you to the DA's office for inviting me to speak and to all the partners in this call today who've been supporting Ms. Fong and her, and her family. Uh, as a representative of CCSJ, um, I am incredibly saddened to hear about um, our grandmother, um, who have been missing for five days, with grandparents of my own who, who only speak Mandarin. I can only imagine how difficult this time is for Ms. Fong's family. So our heart goes out to you, um, and we are here to support you. Uh, I'm here as a CCSJ to, to lift up how important it is for all our communities to feel safe. Um, and, and right now, we also are noticing that we've been under-resourced when it comes to providing violence prevention, preventing, uh, providing safety and victim support services, especially for our working class um, monolingual immigrant speaking, uh, Asian American communities and other communities of color. This is why all levels of government must work together in this moment. And we thank you to those who are already doing this, but we all must do better to support our own communities with more culturally responsive, more in language victim and safety support services. We must do better to help our communities navigate these services, especially in moments of crises, when it is our elderly and our vulnerable who need to feel safe the most. Coalition, our Coalition of Community Safety and Justice was formed for the sole purpose of advocating for the interests of our Asian American communities in SF and other affected communities who are already living on the margins. Um, we've experienced devastating impacts of violence from our unprecedented, unprecedented spikes against Asian Americans. Um, but our working class Asian American, community, American communities have always been on the front lines of under-resourcing. We've seen low wages, limited or no language access to government assistance and programs. This is the exact reason why our, our coalition continues to call for investments, continued investments for a comprehensive safety agenda. That includes one, like we mentioned, providing justice and healing for all victims, all survivors, for like effective, culturally relevant trainings for all agencies, like more victim support, um, and, and prevention programs that CYC has been uh, has been leading in their street outreach uh, and service support. Two, it means creating more community public safety networks so that in moments like this, organizations and government agencies can collaborate in real time. Three, um, it includes engaging in our communities around cross-racial solidarity work um, and fighting for long-term resources so that everyone can feel healthy and safe. And lastly, I just want to say, as we continue to work together, um, I, I uh, really applaud our, our agencies who are in this uh, together in this moment, our law enforcement. family and, and making sure that we find her and bring her back safe and sound. Um, thank you very much. Thank you, Ms. Wu. And finally, we will hear from Andy Wong, who is the Director of Advocacy at the Chinese Affirmative Action, or Chinese for Affirmative Action, sorry. 
Thank you, Casey. Hi, everyone. My name is Andy Wong, and I'm the Director of Advocacy at CAA. We are a longstanding civil rights organization founded over 50 years ago and based in San Francisco. Uh, first, uh, we are so sorry for the anguish uh, and worry that Jean Chang Kong Fung's family are going through right now. Uh, this is a heartbreaking situation, and uh, we truly hope for Ms. Fung's safe return soon. Uh, while we're not fully aware of all the details surrounding this case, uh, I think it's important to acknowledge more generally uh, how critical it is for members of our Chinese American community, uh, including those who speak a language other than English, to be able to access uh, critical services regardless of language ability. Uh, for us, language access uh, is a civil rights issue. Uh, it's also a public safety issue. Uh, when members of our community aren't able to communicate with first responders and public safety personnel, uh, that's an issue that must be rectified. Uh, we must do better to uh, make sure that our agencies are properly resourced to ensure language support for any members of our community uh, to get the help they need. And our agencies need to have training and protocols in place to ensure that a situation like Ms. Fung's never happens again. Uh, finally, personnel matters, and it's critical that our first responders and public safety personnel reflect the diversity of the communities they serve. Uh, agencies must also do better to ensure they have staff that can provide culturally competent and linguistically appropriate services to all members of our API communities. Uh, once again, I want to reiterate our hope that Ms. Fung is returned safely and be able to re reunite with her family soon. Uh, and I echo the pleas from fellow speakers for the community to please look out for Ms. Fung. Thank you. Thank you. And at this time, we can take a couple of questions from the press. We actually have our first question. Question is from uh, KTSF. Why did CHP officers drop off Ms. Fung at the Marina Safeway on Friday? Um, is there any chance that Ms. Fung is in other parts of the Bay Area? And according to the SFPD press release, Ms. Fung likes or like likes to patronize local casinos like the River Rock Casino. Can we get more information on this? Um, Deputy Chief Viswani, is that a question that you can answer? Yes, I, I can. So CHP initially saw her near the MacArthur Tunnel they they approached her and she asked them she did not appear to be disoriented did not appear to have any kind of medical issues at that time she was not actually reported missing because she goes out on walks and that was only half an hour from the time that she went on her walk so the family did not report her missing she wasn't missing till that night um, just past I believe it was 10.50 that, that night that she was actually reported missing. So CHP at the time, just as a courtesy, gave her a ride to the Marina Safeway as they would do for any citizen. And uh, we, we are looking not just at San Francisco, but also outside of San Francisco. So um, we're working closely with the family to try to hone in on any kind of favorite places that she would be comfortable at. And those would be places that that were, but at, at this point, what we're working on today, yesterday they were out getting video. Today we're, we're getting private video. So we've contacted people that have homes that have video. They've called us back. We're going back to go look at their video today. Thank you. Do we have any additional questions? And if not, then we can close for today. But I do want to let everyone know that our communications department will be sending out a press release shortly. We do have um, a second question. I believe it's from Sing Tao. Can we have the Chinese name of Ms. Fung? It's Zhang King Zun is the Cantonese name.
Okay, so seeing that there are no additional questions, I want to thank all of our speakers today, again, for being here on, on very, very short notice. And hopefully we will be hearing some positive news soon for the family. Um, I, see, I, I do see two, I'm sorry, I do see two new questions that just popped I in. I do, right. Um, so we can take the next question. Was Ms. Fung, Mrs. Fung last seen at the Marina Safeway? How did she get to the MacArthur Tunnel? Um, Maybe that's a qu another question for SFPD. So she was walking along the MacArthur Tunnel. So she was seen at the Safeway after the CHP dropped her off at the Marina Safeway. I hope that answers the question. And also just one more thing regarding, we do have um, Cantonese speaking officers at SVU, we also have Cantonese speaking officers in patrol. In, in concert with uh, Special Victims Unit. Thank you. Um, a couple more questions here. There has been a lot said about language access. Where do we think the ball was dropped? Who can answer this question? I, I can speak to that briefly. I just want to really reiterate what uh, Deputy Chief Aswani has said about the language skills, both within the SFPD team working on this, as well as in uh, the district attorney's office, our investigators who've been helping uh, our Cantonese speakers, and obviously uh, interim chief of victim services, Casey Lee, also speaks Cantonese. Um, we know that in San Francisco, and this is something that Supervisor Chan just spoke to, I think, very eloquently, we know that there is a very significant problem with language access in a wide range of government services. And there is no area more critical to have quick and effective language access than when it comes to things like public safety. It is imperative that every time someone calls 911, every time there's an emergency, they can get help just as quickly if they don't speak English as if they do. And collectively as a city, we have a lot of work to do to ensure full language access. Um, this is not a problem that is limited to any one agency. All of us in the district attorney's office, in SFPD, in the board of supervisors, Department of Emergency Management and Communication, everywhere you go in San Francisco, we need to do better to provide full language access. It is a significant logistics challenge. It's a staffing challenge. It's a resources challenge. And I am sure it's a challenge that's shared by statewide agencies like the Highway Patrol. Now, the best information we have is that the officers in the Highway Patrol, who, as uh, Deputy Chief Aswani said, gave Ms. Fung a ride as a courtesy before she had been reported missing, used a language app on their phone to try and communicate with her. And we don't know where the communication went wrong, but we know she didn't get a ride home. She didn't get a ride close to her home. It, it's hard to say exactly where the communication breakdown was, but I think all of us feel that had there been more language access, had there been perhaps a language line deployed that spoke Toisan rather than Cantonese on an app, perhaps this devastating situation could have been avoided. And it is a very stark reminder for all of us of the need to continue to advocate for language access, whether it be Spanish, Cantonese, Mandarin, Toisan, or any other language that the diverse communities of San Francisco speak. Thank you. And we can take one last question here. Uh, it's, it's just a question to clear. It looks like a asking for clarification. Is the last known, what is the last known time that Ms. Fung was seen at the Safeway or leaving her home? Um, and I believe that should be another question for SFPD. So she left her home at three o'clock on Friday, the 28th, and she would have been at that Safeway just around 4 p.m. that day. So around 3.40, I believe is the time that we have confirmation at the Safeway. Yeah, 3.45, around, around that area. So around four o'clock, if anybody seen her approximately that time, even if we have a general 
location or direction of travel, that really helps us a lot because then we can just focus on that corridor and try to get video. Okay. And I do see a few more questions, but unfortunately, that is all the time that we have today. We will be issuing a press release later on today. And um, the family does want me to, uh, to thank all of the speakers that are here today, just coming together and drawing greater public attention to this. And again, um, we're hoping to hear very good news soon. Thank you all.